Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Comsi, the place of everything related to Amazon FBA private level and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Comsi, and today we'll bring you Dima, who is the founder and CEO of Salesbyte, which is an agency that specializes on everything that has to do with PPC. And, and that's why I wanted to bring Dima today on board, because we know that in, in the Amazon world, PPC is always the thing that brings the biggest headache, and it's always changing, new strategies, new tricks, new gold nuggets as they call them and i think having dima today is going to be great to you know answer some of the typical questions around ppc and also learn around some of the strategies they use uh, in their agency so dima it's a pleasure to have you here how you doing my friend yeah thank you so much for having me vincenzo i'm doing great today and uh, hopefully i'll be able to share some knowledge today from my real experience and it will be useful to anyone who has something to do with amazon <laughs> That's great, Dima. Thank you. Yeah, I think as I said at the very beginning, uh, you know, things that have to do with PPC is always, you know, there is so much confusion most of the time for Amazon search, specifically we're getting started. There are so many strategies, there are so many ways of optimizing campaigns, and I think people can easily get confused and, and they don't really know what to get started with. And I think this type of content is, is a good way to keep incentivizing what are the best things you could be doing to keep a, that performance as as well as as possible. So I think before we jump into all you know all the things in terms of strategies and all the tricks, I think usually you know as I do with all my guests, I like to learn more about you because I feel you know we all have an interesting background on this history that people can use as an inspiration and learn from it. So if you can maybe give us a little bit about who's Dima and how you landed into the Amazon space, yeah? Yeah, sure, man. Uh, so I started on Amazon about five to six years ago in okay. 2017. I used to live in Canada at that time and I was working at a job and I was looking to ways make honest money online. You know? <laughs> I had some marketing experience before and I totally accidentally found out about Amazon private label model that you okay. can, you know, buy product in China, ship it to the US under your own label and sell it. So that got me really excited and it wasn't so much information back in the day, you know, in 2017. Yeah. That's why I want to share some of my experience now. So yeah. I learned uh, the basics of how to open an account. I did all of that. Long story short, in about a year, my product it was stagnating, and I realized I, I made some you know crucial mistakes again because didn't have that knowledge and experience back in the day. But I did learn about Amazon PPC, about Amazon marketing, and I was part of lots of Facebook groups for Amazon mm -hmm. sellers at that time, yeah. and I met my future at that time business partner one oh, uh, nice yeah he needed some help with ppc and i okay. reached out to him and he wanted me to look at his account so i started working more of a ppc manager with him and he yeah. only had two asins and yeah i was working with him uh you know it uh, went into more of a friendship partnership mm -hmm. uh i started helping more with marketing and in about over two years we were able to scale from only two ASINs to 25 now, and we sell in the US, we sell in Canada, and launching in Europe soon. And uh, from word of the mouth, we started to having other sellers come to us uh, yeah. looking for help. And yeah, uh, recently we decided to emerge as an agency. Uh, we never really positioned ourselves because we never were looking for clients intentionally, but we see that you know, we really enjoy Amazon. This is our life. We really love this, love this industry. Yeah. yeah. And that's our story, man. Short Very nice. Yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing that. I think, it, yeah, most most of the t people I usually ask their background around how they got started with Amazon, even like my service by accident, you know, by finding new ways of making money. A extra ways of doing a, a business on the side and then you, you you find amazon you fall in love by the fact that you know is as you said you can do your own brands and your products and everything and and, and then the rest is history like yourself right uh, now um t tell me more about um how basically the idea of the agency came to fruition i guess it's because as you mentioned you saw the need of people struggling with ppc and all that and then you say you know what i think the an agency would be a great idea right <laughs> yeah 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 so 
yeah, as I mentioned, uh, yeah, I saw people struggling on Facebook, and yeah. uh, you know, we were scaling the brand with a business partner. We had other people coming in. Awesome. Yeah, then then we saw it's, it's a great opportunity, and again, because we really enjoy uh, everything mm -hmm. that has to do with Amazon, and I'm good at marketing. Mm -hmm. I love Amazon PPC. Yeah. I love brand building and my business awesome. partner, Muad, uh, he has some background in cybersecurity. Mm, so he, yeah, and he's yeah. more in the background. He has, yeah, he's the gig guy. Of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's running yeah. lots of operations, you know, logistics, yeah. all of our software. Yeah, all of our the systems. complex stuff. <laughs> yeah, and that's great having a partner that I can yeah. rely on. Uh, awesome. With these questions, I'm not good at, you know, different yeah. integrations, yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah, and we have uh, also a team of VAs uh, that are all over the world that help with our nice. brand, and we use them with our clients. And Very just nice. to, to note one thing, in the beginning you mentioned that we work with Amazon PPC, and that is right, but uh, we are trying to be more of a full cycle management. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I will get more into that later, but you know, today, the way the creatives and all of that are super tight with I your know. PPC performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must know that. Yeah, yeah, it's super important. It's, it's good that you bring that to the table because I, I, sometimes, you know, we get a lot of these calls that people, oh, it's my PPC and my A because my tag or something like that. And I think that most of the time PPC is the only solution. But as you mentioned, there are other things that can actually make a big change, such as the images, the video, the copy, your storefront. All those things that packaging, people don't think about that. And they think it's just around targeting the right keywords. And it, it's important for sure that all of them work together because nowadays it's not anymore the days of, you know, having a good uh, campaign is having a whole a uh, good brand working on Amazon uh, to make it successful, you know. Um, now let's, let's start bringing PPC to a table. So a lot of things have been happening in the PPC world, as I say. I mean, things change pretty much on a daily basis, new strategies, new things coming to the dashboard, uh, KPIs to track and all that. So I, I think the first thing I would like to, to bring to the table is maybe if you can share with us some of the latest things you have seen in, in, in the PPC world and some advice that you can share from that and we can get from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, some of the new things that we've been working on, and I mean, they're not necessarily new, new. Mm -hmm. So first of all is day parting. And yes. day parting, it, it's been around for many years. People have been talking it, they've been trying it, but actually just recently we got that uh, Amazon marketing stream that now yeah. officially provides this data. Mm -hmm. So we can now really have the data to run those day parting campaigns and not just guess, right? So this is one thing we are trying to test more and this is not a big part of what we're totally doing. Yeah. Again, more of a testing, but yeah, we're testing it on different accounts and we are seeing mixed results. Uh, somewhere okay. it works, uh, somewhere it doesn't. Uh, an important uh, note to keep in mind about day parting is to do it, you really need quite a, quite a lot of data. Uh, yeah, I was going yeah. to mention that because yeah. if you're spending ten dollars per day, I mean, yeah. it's like <laughs> you can't. Yeah, really do it, yeah. yeah <laughs> if you're just starting out, if you're a smaller brand, probably it's not something you should be focused on. But if you're a big brand, you have dozens or hundreds of SKUs, and uh, you think you reached most of the possibilities, yeah. yeah, yeah, this is a good way to you know do something new. Uh, the day mm -hmm. parting, try researching yeah. your data, yeah. Good. And yeah. this day parting, um, just to give a bit more context to our listeners, uh, at the moment in, in which uh, marketplace is available, because we all know that it's limited, but some people might not know. So right now, in which countries is available the Amazon stream? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm 100% sure it's in the US. Yeah. Uh, probably it's not available in most of other markets. Yeah, so that, that's a good uh, pick on you that uh, you uh, mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's where we mostly work, um, you know. So day parting. Good, good. And now, when it comes to a uh, day parting, would you say? Um, because I know, as you mentioned, some people have been trying it for for years now, and some people try to make it up, like just by assuming, oh, maybe my product is not something that they would buy in the morning, and they manually do it at, at night, turn the campaigns on and off, and so on. But realistically, we know that's impossible to keep consistent for long term. So my question basically here with their parting, are you using some kind of software? 
uh, and how usually it's implemented at the high level, at least, so people can understand how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, you can get the hourly performance data for orders in your business reports, mm -hmm. and that's where, when you have significant amount of data and you know how to read it, that's where you can first of all find out the patterns. You know mm -hmm. what what hours or what time of the day works the best. Uh, talking about software, yeah, I think the best way uh, to work with uh, day parting is through software. And there are a few softwares that offer them uh, right now. I am using uh, a software that is not public. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm part of a private PPC community. So awesome. yeah, we have a tool over there, which is uh, not even, you know, like automation tool. It's more of analytics tool. And yeah, the, the developers, they uh, made this function available to create campaigns for day parting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've been testing it. Very nice, very nice. And now, um, uh, taking the uh, Amazon stream optimization apart and all that, uh, how, what is your experience? And the reason why I want to bring this to the table is because I feel not a lot of people is bringing this to the table. And I feel it has so much potential, just that people don't understand it properly yet, which is a, a, a advertisement a display, sponsor display, right? I would like to hear your take on this because I know it's something relatively new. I mean, it's not new, but we know it's, it's kind of like what, what Amazon is trying to do to bring what DSP usually does for a, in, a, as a platform to having more access to smaller sellers. And I would like to hear your take if you have some experience with that, and maybe you can also share some strategies around display if you have any. Yeah. Uh, you, you're talking about the uh, demand sponsor display. Okay, sponsored display. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sponsored display, yeah, it's a controversial topic. A lot of yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work, and yeah. So sponsored display, it's an ad type that you again should utilize more when you're a more of established brand. Mm -hmm. uh, you can totally find it working even when you are newer, but I feel like it will take you quite a few tests uh, to find uh, what's working for mm -hmm. you with sponsored display and even for bigger brands uh usually we want to start at the top of the iceberg so like mm -hmm. uh, for the sponsored display we have audience targeting we have category targeting we can target on our competitors so at first we want to cover the most relevant parts with sponsored display and really segment the campaigns so this campaign sponsored display campaign is for this uh, audience and this campaign is for another audience. So mm -hmm. we don't want to mix the audiences. Different by, audiences, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by interests or by age type. Whatever. Behavior. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We want to segment them as much as possible so then we can easily read the data, you know. And, but that basically applies to everything in PPC. It just you have to really be more precise with this SD. And... I also feel like it takes more time for them uh, to work, more time for optimizing, mm -hmm. but you can find those uh, campaigns that are working for you. It's just, again, you have to be more patient, yes. more granular. Because yeah. it's very broad, usually. You are targeting big audiences and you know it's difficult. To, it's basically top of the funnel and you try to bring them down to the bottom. Yeah, Exactly. And some campaign types, they are meant more for brand awareness. awareness. So yeah, awareness. Amazon a while ago, they introduced this new to brand metric, mm -hmm. but I feel like it only like really becoming so important now yeah, when we have I all know. this yeah, <laughs> new functions and all. So yeah, this new to brand metric, uh, it, it's more to sponsor display because uh, maybe with sponsor display again, you don't want to be looking so much profitability. Yeah, you don't want to be profitable. It's new customers, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Very interesting. And now, when it comes to sponsor display, I get this question a lot, uh, and I want to make you this question as well, so we can, you know, add value around this subject, which is how much of my total budget I should allocate to sponsor mm -hmm. display? Because some people don't know if they should allocate just ten percent of their total budget, twenty percent, etc. So. Based on your experience, what is usually a good balance of saying, you know, this percentage of your total budget, you should try with sponsor display if you are already a certain level of maturity. What would you say that's usually a good range? Yeah, that's a very great question, Vincenzo. And like with everything in PPC, it really depends. So if mm -hmm. you're just starting with sponsor display, it shouldn't be like more than 5% of your total spend. Okay. 
once you get some campaigns going that are bringing the, some results you're happy with, then you can start slowly increasing it. But I feel like it shouldn't, you know, at a big right percentage. Now, yeah. 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 Maybe 20% at the top. But again, depends on your performance. Maybe yeah. again, all, all products are unique. All brands are unique. I am sure there are cases when sponsored display can be the main driver for mm -hmm. the account. I'm sure there are cases like that. It just maybe not the majority, you know? Yes, for sure. For sure. Great. So um, now we have to talk about um, a Amazon Stream sponsor display, which is relatively new. I mean, the, the latest audiences you have been uh, basically bringing to the table. What other things have you seen changing radically right now in, in the PPC world that maybe you think is beneficial to know, or maybe some new strategies that you can share? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So actually, a few topics I want to touch, and again, it's not necessarily a radical change, but a change mm -hmm. that I really observed. And uh, back to our conversation in the beginning with the creatives. So I That's think this, right. this is a big part we should talk about uh, when talking about PPC. So I, I feel like even let's let's start with the basics. You know, a lot of people give Amazon PPC strategy. Amazon mm -hmm. PPC advice on the internet, and it might be most of it might be good advice. But what people don't usually say is uh, to whoever listens to from that side of the screen, you should be listening and taking this advice, and then looking at where your current product exactly. is, where your current brand is, and then yeah, seeing if this strategy or this advice will be a good fit for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's not copy paste. It's not copy paste to every single brand. Yeah. For yeah, sure. and one one thing also to keep in mind the product life cycle, because mm -hmm. it is so important uh, when you launch a new product with Amazon PPC, you expect it to behave different, and you will treat it different from the product that's mm -hmm. been selling for multiple years, right? Mm -hmm. And that's also super important considering. Uh, when taking any advice on the strategy, on the PPC, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, where is your product? Uh, first of all, learn about your competitors or your top competitors, learn about your niche, you know, learn about where your product is positioned, uh, where you will perform the best. Should you go for the uh, top placements if you're not there yet, are you ready for it? So these are all important questions to ask yourself uh, before taking any strategy, doing any optimization. And that's yeah. uh, also maybe to the change. I feel like uh, being a PPC manager or brand owner today, uh, I mean, working with PPC, you have to be more of a marketer than ever. Mm -hmm. You have to understand products, niches, why people want certain products, what, uh, you know, influences conversion, clicks through rate, all of that. You have to be more of a marketer and you have to be more precise with PPC. Because again, like we were talking, uh, so many uh, new features, the sponsored mm -hmm. display, it's been for a few years, it's been around for a few years, but still people can agree. Keeps evolving and it keeps yeah. evolving. Yeah. yeah, so you have to, you have to be aware of where you are at and uh, what strategies will work for you at this moment. And then again, your product is live, it's evolving. So mm -hmm. then your strategies should be adjusting, you know, as, as yes. the time goes. Yeah, I think that's a good advice because sometimes when we do audits on accounts, we are surprised that their products have been selling for three, four years and they have the same campaign they use when they launch and they haven't changed it. So they haven't changed the strategy, they haven't adapted. And I think for sure, each cycle needs to be taken into consideration because you need know, things change, the condition of your product changes, even the market. And if you don't adapt, then that's when you start seeing the performance going downwards. Um, now, another thing I have seen a lot people been mentioning more and more when it comes to PPC that they're using in conjunction, at least when you start being a, a more high level brand, is start using brand analytics to also understand the data and, and make decisions at your, at your, at your, within your PPC campaign. So I would like to hear what is your take on all these new things that you know Amazon has been releasing, such as the search query performance report, and if you uh, have been us using it for you know PPC optimization and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazon, again, making so many new releases. And back to the beginning, we love doing this because we ended up 
having to work with this technology. Mm -hmm. I was really never an IT guy myself. Yeah. Again, was more of a marketer. But now I have to work with all this Amazon technology mm -hmm. uh, and get to know it. And you know, it really it's really interesting for me. Uh, but back to brand analytics. Yeah, it's an amazing tool. We utilize it. The search query performance as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what it does, it really allows you to see uh, keywords or uh, search terms seasonality. Mm -hmm. That's and right. Yeah, you had that question, what you see change. I see like it is more important than ever, uh, uh, you know, noticing the seasonality and adjusting your product page. Because uh, again, the keywords, they have different search volume in different mm -hmm. seasons. So when you have a super competitive niche, the sellers who are adjusting some of their keywords, and what I mean is, let's say you have a product title mm -hmm. and... It is a good product title, but let's say the first keyword uh, has the highest search volume right now, mm -hmm. and the second has a little bit less. But yeah. in a month, the second will have more, and you can track this in the brand analytics and search query performance. So maybe you should swap those two keywords, and maybe it will lead to better performance. And yeah, this, this is the kind of manipulation brand analytics allows us to do. I see. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, brand analytics, even for us, is being game changer because now, yeah, you have access to basically understanding how your product compares against other competitors in terms of what is the baseline in terms of the conversions, if you're underperforming, overperforming, what are the top sellers at the keyword level, and this yeah, data yeah. that then you can use to make decisions on your bidding and all of that, which, by the way, I'm going to use now this opportunity to ask you about if you have uh, been playing around um, in terms of the terminology that we call a keyword cannibalization, which I'm pretty sure you have heard in the PPC world, which basically there's this concern lately that people have been having that what happens if, you know, you're already top one organically on a, on a, on a keyword, will you actually still be targeting top one placement in terms of sponsor? And if so, have you seen any negative effect of actually eating your own cells? Have you heard that? Have, have you been playing with that? I want is usually your advice around that subject. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And yeah, this is something we also try to pay more attention to. Actually, uh, there are a few KPIs we want to always take a look at when working with Amazon PPC. And, you know, there are a, a few famous ones like ACOS Tacos. Yeah. But yeah, one is that we're paying more attention is like uh, PPC to organic uh, mm -hmm. sales and spend. Yeah, so regarding the cannibalization, yeah, sometimes uh, we will uh, track like on every single uh, ASIN level. I mean, not sometimes, all the time. How much we're getting sales from PPC, how much we're getting from organic. And then what you're talking about, if you have uh, organic keywords in top position, then should you run your ads? Yeah. Well, we experiment with that. There is no set answer. We, mm -hmm. we track those KPIs, you know, how profitable we are. Again, is our main driver organic? Is our main driver PPC? Because usually we want it to be organic, you know, mm -hmm. but Amazon is so complex. So yeah. again, we measure it. We measure it. Sometimes we will be okay with the organic product in placement and PPC product in placement mm -hmm. because maybe we are taking more market share in a very competitive niche, you know? That's right. We want to advertise all our other ASINs that are maybe only different by color. Again, mm -hmm. take all those uh, extra placements. So yes, maybe we are doing cannibalization, but if we're checking those metrics, again, regarding PPC to organic span, and we're making sure we're profitable, then why not do that? And we're, yeah. yeah, if we're not profitable and it doesn't benefit us, then we will uh, think about other strategy. Good, good, good advice. Yeah, I wanted to bring that to the table because we get that question so many times, like, oh, what should I do? Should I keep the, uh, the ads running or not? And and the answer that you guys is correct. I mean, you need to look at the data and, and make decision based on that because sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't, so very important. Yeah. Now, uh, another thing I want to bring to the table is and the reason why I want to ask you is because I'm pretty sure that you have experience with this. And I also want to use this opportunity that you have 
so much knowledge in the PPC space to clarify some of the these common questions, which is, what do you think about how you should structure your campaigns in terms of the amount of keywords at the campaign level? You know, some people say, oh, don't put more than five, don't put more than 10, put one. So I would like to hear your take on this so we can provide some advice on that. I mean, what, what are the things you are seeing the best results in terms of the amount of keywords that you put in a campaign on how you usually segment those keywords? Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very great question, Richard. So, I mean, I think it's one of the basics and still there is a lot People of debate do it wrong. on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is still a lot of debate on it. So uh, what we found to be working the best is we usually go with not more than five to 10 keywords per one campaign. Okay. And talking about structure, it is very important. You don't want to miss uh, match types. Mm -hmm. So you want let's say five exact match keywords in one campaign or 10 exact match keywords in one campaign, then the same for phrase and the mm -hmm. same for broad, right? Yeah. And uh, you want one skew or one ASIN per campaign. Again, mm -hmm. something important to keep in mind when talking about PPC data and uh, you need to read the data and you need to segment data. So mm -hmm. yeah. You don't want to stuff all the uh, all the keywords, all the match types, all the ASINs. Yes, a few keywords in the campaign, one ASIN, one match type. And it can get to a lot of campaigns, but trust me, it will be easier to read <laughs> a lot of campaigns than one gigantic campaign that won't be even bringing any data most likely. You know? Yeah, very nice, very nice. Uh, now, and um, I was thinking now that we were talking already uh, around campaigns and uh, optimization in general, to bring another question that I feel is going to add value to the to the public, as in is, is around optimization, right? Um, and my question around optimization is that we most of the time I also get this question a lot, which is what should I do in terms of uh, optimization? Should I do it manually? Should I use a software? Uh, should I use bulk files? Uh, should I just do it within the PPC dashboard? And and I know the answer is going to vary depending on the situation of each person, but I would like to hear your take around what you have seen is, is the most efficient way, especially that you manage so many brands, you know? So I would like to hear what are the things you feel gives the best control to a, client, uh, to a person, a seller, in terms of understanding what is going on and making changes uh, as efficient as possible, if you can share that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, another great question Vincenzo and uh, again just a few things to keep in mind is who is asking this question and what your goals are you know uh, so in terms of the best way of managing PPC we do most of things through bulk files mm -hmm. uh, but again going to basics uh, you have to be aware of where you at where your product mm -hmm. is currently where your brand is are you a top seller or you're not Learn about your competitors, read their reviews, mm -hmm. what people like, what you, what they don't like. Learn the same about yourself before doing any optimization with PPC. Yeah, you know? <laughs> very <laughs> <That's fun>. the <laughs> <most important. laughs> Yeah, because uh, you want to have this like it, it's very important to have this understanding to make any decisions. You know, uh, then uh, yeah, if you're a brand owner uh, and asking this question, the best way. Again, depending on how much time you have, what are your goals? You can go with an agency. You can hire someone in-house. Mm. You can hire uh, you can uh, hire software. It all depends. And always can work. It, it's just, again, so unique. Uh, but I feel like you still have to understand ads at some extent. If you're a mm. brand owner, if you're a PPC manager, you must understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even, even if you're running software. And with the softwares, it's not set it and forget it. You know, I think yeah. many softwares, they market themselves as like... Like AI, that they do yeah. everything for you. Yeah, Yeah, subscribe to us and forget about PPC. And that's not, that's not the case a lot of times. And again, softwares do work. But you have to know what you're doing. You have to and how know... To say, and how to set it up because most of these exactly. tools... You need to put the parameters, the rules, and yeah. everything. And if you don't understand PPC, you're going to do it wrong, and the whole thing's not going to work. So yeah. Exactly, exactly. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know what KPIs to look for if software mm -hmm. is not working right, and what questions to ask if something is not working right to hold uh, accountable people who are mm -hmm. presenting the software. You know? yeah. Like I said, 
we are still managing apps through bulk files. And a lot of people might say it's, it's a little bit old fashioned, but yeah. you know, like last summer, there was a major update to bulk files, bulk files 2.0. And yeah. it gave us really uh, almost all the flexibility we needed to manage even huge accounts. We can mm -hmm. make thousands of manipulations. Through Just by using files. macros and everything. Yeah. Yeah, Very exactly. Simple. When you know how to use the filters, SOPs, it, it's magic, man, you know? Yeah. So yeah, bulk files, they work for us. Yeah, I think what happens with the bulk files is because they are so afraid of Excel, you know, needing to upload an Excel and they are so f uh, scared of flat files that even for listings and the thing, something's going to, uh, you know, screw their account. <laughs> That's why people was, try to stay away. Yeah. <laughs> I was never good with uh, Excel or Google Sheets myself, but uh, I, I really got excited about Amazon ads and learned it, you know, how to build pivot tables, all of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right you now. know, a few years ago, you would tell me it's crazy. I was like, nah, you know, Excel, that's not for me. But yeah, yeah, man, I love it. And Vincenzo, you know what? I honestly, also why I enjoy it is because you have to think about Amazon PPC as life. Mm -hmm. So in Amazon PPC, you get data, you read it, and you make decisions based on it because you want a better outcome. So the same in life. Uh, when you live, you uh, have a career or you have a business and you make steps, you can make mistakes, mistakes or make progress. Then you analyze the data and implement it to better yourself in the future. You know, so that's that's how I like to think about it. Very, very good analogy. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that to, to start concluding. I think <laughs> for sure we, we talk so many interesting things. And I think before we we've, uh, finalize it, I think I would like to ask you a last question is, if there is anything as you, you feel you would like to share with the audience today in, in case we miss something or, or you think we cover most of the things? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like uh, we didn't cover that much about the creators, but that's okay, man. We can have another one <laughs> sometimes because it's another message. Yeah, topic. for sure. Yeah. I think creative, especially with sponsored brands, you could do so many tricks yeah. there with video banners and so on. So definitely, I'm going to make sure we have a second part so you go more in depth, 100%. Uh, now, uh, in case I know you specialize on this, um, maybe, you know, people want to ask you more questions and even eventually hire you to help you with PPC. So can you share with us how people can find you, your agency, and all of that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Vincenzo. So our agency is Sales by. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and probably LinkedIn would be the yeah. best uh, place. You can reach out directly to me on LinkedIn. They have a very nice logo, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah it's yeah. a dog, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we dig for that data, man. Because uh, we, good. we, I like we sniff for that data. That's good branding. Good branding. <laughs> I'm going to make sure to put all that in the description. And in the meantime, I want to thank you for coming on board. I'm looking forward to have you for a second part, man. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Vincenzo. You're an amazing host. Have a nice one. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.